Hi there, my name is Robert Asher. I'm an evolutionary biologist, and I decided to make a video to uh, give some tips on using a program called Drishti, and Drishti is used uh, to interpret CT scans, basically, or actually anything where you have slices, um, data in visual data in two dimensions that you want to be able to make uh, into a volume. And so I want to start by showing you the GitHub site where you can download this open source software. There it is. And I also want to acknowledge the author, A.J. Lemaye. A.J., please forgive me, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Um, but it's a really great program, and I hope lots of other people can benefit from this program as I have. The other uh, point I want to use, or the raw data I'm going to use to show Drishti import to you, is from this University of Texas at Austin site called digimorph.org. And I'm going to download a CT scan that's publicly available. It's, in, it's open source. Um, and this is of a Mongolian gerbil. It's a CT scan of its skull. Um, and here I'm, I'm now circling with the mouse the link that you click on to download a zipped folder, half a gigabyte worth of 2D reconstructions of that Mongolian dribble skull. And once you do that, you end up with, uh, once you unzip that folder, you end up with something that looks like this, one folder that has a bunch of 8-bit TIFFs in it, right, almost 1,400 of them, and then the other folder is a PDF with metadata. And so, uh, both of these things we will need. Okay, so I'll start with Drishti import then. I go to my uh, C programs folder, double click on Drishti import, and I'm using volume or uh, version 2.6.4. And what I want to do now is open up my TIFF folder, make sure that it's just these TIFF files in it, right? There's no XMLs, there's no text files or PDFs or anything, just these TIFFs. In this particular case, that is true. And I want to make sure to click, after I select them all, to click and hold on this very first image in the stack. right? And I'm going to drag it over to my Drishti import window. And it's going to think about it for a moment. And while it's thinking about it, had I dragged it from, say, image 9, then, as I'll show you in a moment, that would have been the first file that would have been imported um, by Drishti import. So there is the dialog box that I get. I just want to move this over a little bit so we can make sure that that first image in the stack corresponds to the first image of the CT scan, which it does. That's one. And again, had I dragged it from one of these other ones, this wouldn't have been. Had I dragged it from 10, it would have started at 10. Okay, so that's something to watch out for. Okay, so I click OK, and I also now have to tell the program what these are. They're grayscale TIFF images, so I click on that, hit OK. That uh, is correct, 8, bit per 8 bits per voxel, click OK, and it will now open all of these files. I might add that the computer I'm using is a couple years old. This is not a high-end graphics workstation. I think it has an NVIDIA low-power um, graphics card with 2 gigs of, of video RAM, and I think 12 gigs of regular RAM. So that you know, it's a modest computer that's a couple years old. So here are the data that I just downloaded that I just, I'm sorry, that I just imported into, into Drishti import. And the, the couple things to note here. First of all, I have a slider that lets me go slice by slice through this CT scan of my dribble, right? And that's what you see on the lower half of this image. On top here, I have a histogram. So frequency on the y-axis and uh, pixel density on the x-axis. And what you'll note is if I slice off or if I if I move this slider and so as not to include these um, these pixels on the left extreme in the histogram, this thing just got a bit darker and that's because I'm now eliminating something like it's very subtle. I mean they, this was a very clean scan, but once in a while you'll see the styrofoam cup, for example, some kind of radio translucent substance that was that held the specimen while it was rotating in the CT scanner. Um, you know, so if you want to get rid of that, you move this slider forward a little bit. That doesn't, the, uh, it's pretty clean, so I'm just going to leave it at zero. And the same is true on the high end, right? So your very dense things will be over here. So teeth and bone, for example, every once in a while you get bits of metal, for example, like a museum specimen might have a metal tag on it, which is kind of unfortunate for CT. Um, but you can potentially uh, get rid of that by moving the right slider um, 
on this side. But this is, like I said, a pretty clean scan, so I'm pretty, pretty much just going to leave it. The other point to make here is the size of the file that Drishti is going to create after I hit, after I show you this uh, next step. And that you can see when I move the right hand sliders on this lower pane, look at the this file size in gigabytes. If I were to shave off, say, the rostrum, right, and just do pretty much the back part of the nasal fossa and the brain case, as I'm showing you here, starting at slice 510 and going through the end of the stack, it's going to take 884 megs. In this case, I actually want the whole skull, so I'm just going to go from 0 to 1393. The other thing to keep in mind is that you know, if you, for whatever reason, someone took the CT scan and left some, the first hundred slices were just empty space, you could save yourself some bandwidth by, by deleting that, right? Or at least by restraining or restricting the number of stacks that Drishti writes. In this particular case, again, the CT scan was pretty clean and pretty much almost all the slices in this stack have some data in them. So I'm going to keep the whole thing and my end product, my my Drishti file is going to be a bit over a gig in size. Okay, so now what I want to do is save as. So I go to File, Save As. I need a name here. Um, Marionis is the genus name, so I'll just stick with that for now. Maybe I want Skull. I personally find it a very good idea to include the museum numbers. In fact, why don't I do that right now? Because it's in my metadata. So I go back to my folder up here. I double click on Contents. I'll zoom in a little bit, and here it's telling me this is a, a Texas Memorial Museum specimen, if I'm not mistaken, with the at with the specimen number M05306. So I want to put that in my file name, Marioni's TMM dash M05306, and it's a skull. So that'll be my file name for the the volumetric file that Drishti will work with. I hit OK. Now I get a dialog asking me if I want slice 0 to be the top slice. And this is going to vary depending on the CT machine you have. Um, the CT machine that I typically use at my institute actually defaults to slice 0 as the bottom slice. I'm not entirely sure what the machine, is, how it's set up in Austin, so I'm just going to assume it's like the one that we have. Um, and I'm going to tell it that slice 0 is the bottom slice. And the practical effect that this has is that it will switch left and right. You know, a good strategy when you take CT scans is to get some kind of radio opaque, you know, a bit of plastic on it or something that has a letter or some spelling. And if it spells the word in the right order, um, you know, not mirror image, then you know you've reconstructed left and right correctly. So anyways, I'm going to save slice, as the bottom, slice 0 as the bottom slice. Hit OK. It confirms that. And then it's going to ask me a bunch of um, other questions. And in general, the defaults I, I accept in all these, so no subsampling. This is correct, right? So this is just telling me the X and Y grid size, 1024 by 1024, and that there are 1,394 images in the stack. That's all correct. Now is another very important step, which will enable you to input the actual size of this specimen. And here we need the metadata again. And the voxel size is given to us on this row right here, right? It's telling us that the X and Y dimensions are 0 0.02 millimeters. So I want to copy that, right? And also they're millimeters, not microns. So I'm going to delete the default of 111, put in the X and Y values here, which are the same. And for whatever reason, it's I find a lot of the scans at the at, on Digimorph don't have isometric scans, right? So the Z or Z dimension is a bit different. It's fine because they tell you. So you just copy that as well, add a space, and make sure you got that. And when you have this information from the get-go, that means later on that you can actually take measurements on your on your volumetric Drishti file, which is very very helpful. Okay, so then I just hit OK and. Uh, Drishti is now saving these files. So, all done. And I can minimize this file now and show you, not much to show actually at this point, here's all the same TIFF files, but in that same folder, Drishti import has now written two more files. A one 
k little header file and then the 001 file which has all of the actual data in it and that's a gig and a half almost so that's it for now i think i'll make another video um, with a, some more tips about actually using these files shortly so thanks for listening <laughs>